Hello my gorgeous plant people. Welcome back to Rooting Mindfully. My name is Yana, and today I am wearing color. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So today we're doing episode two of my plant transformation series. And <laughs> so I left my keys in my friend's car and I wanted to do some propagating and staking, but since I obviously can't go anywhere without my keys, we're just gonna do some treatment. Um, I'm gonna have go around and treat some of my plants and wipe off some plant leaves because they have accumulated a lot of dust and a lot of pollen and I just wanna get it taken care of so that way the plants can photosynthesize correctly. Um, and so right now the plants that I have on the table are the ones that I'm going to just go ahead and wipe the leaves down. I do have a bowl of water here and these are my favorite microfiber towels. Um, I do get them from Marshalls. Not saying that you have to get them from Marshalls, but they're part of the greenery collection. But I love microfiber towels because they don't, um, they're a lot safer and softer on your plant leaves. They also don't hold as much water, so you don't have a lot of water left on your plant leaves, which I'm really, um, big on not having a lot of just water sitting on your plants that way you don't have a lot of bacterial infection or anything and I just find them a lot better for your plants and then the plants that I have in the bathroom are plants that I need to treat I find it easier that um, some of them the, the bigger ones I don't need to treat but I just found it easier just to put them in the bathtub um, and that way I can just let them drip drip dry and I find that just to be easier and then I do have two plants outside that I need to treat I'm not sure if I'm going to treat them now just because um, I'm afraid of burning the leaves if I spray them it is a little bit sunny outside but my porch is a little bit shaded so we'll see if I'm going to treat those but for now I'm just going to start wiping off my plant leaves and the majority of the plants on the table are anthuriums and um, prayer plants and I just have like this uh, Anthurium Cobra. Um, it was just getting a lot of pollen and things like that, especially when I had it outside. So it has a lot of, bit of, a lot of pollen on the leaves that I need to take care of. And I'm gonna uh, put some footage in just so you can guys see what the leaves look like. But I am happy it's been putting out uh, new growth. This was the last leaf to come out and then it's got this leaf coming in here if you guys can see that burgundy leaf so i'm excited because this plant is finally growing and you guys um, know that if you watch my plant tours like, this plant wasn't doing anything i struggle with this plant the most um, especially as far as roots every time i went to go touch the plant the roots um, kept snapping and it was just really bad i didn't think the plant was going to make it I've never had a plant where the roots just kept snapping. I mean, they were cracking off like chips. And like I said, I've never had that happen before. And so I, what I did was I just left the plant alone. The only thing I did was water it. I didn't move it, anything. So, but yeah, so I'm excited that it's now growing and uh, seems to be doing a lot better. I still haven't touched the roots or anything. I'm just gonna, you know, let the plant do its thing. But you can see the amount of dust and stuff that's coming off. So now it should be able to grow even, you know, even better. But I'm excited for this plant to get fuller. And then you can see that they're a lot shinier. Plants are happy when they're able to take in the light. This is my Anthurium plamonii that I got from Plantarina. This plant also struggled at first. And it, and I believe it struggled because it was so root bound when I received it. Like I could hardly move the roots. And it was just, it wasn't taking up water. So I did go ahead and, and tweak it. I moved the roots around just a little bit, not too much where I damaged the plant. But I just wanted to roughly move the roots around so that way it could start to, you know, take up the water that I was giving it. But this one has also been putting on growth as well, which I'm really excited for. Um, and I did notice that once I moved these plants, once I moved the sandy light over to these plants, they just started putting out so much growth. 
but these two are the newest leaves this one here and this one and then it also has one growing in the bottom here so I, I really do think that they love the Sansy lights and you guys know the Sansy lights are one of my favorite lights as well Yeah, I'm just doing all my anthuriums, or a couple of my anthuriums. This is my anthurium superbum. This one is really dusty as well. This one grows so slow for me. It's only gave, given me one leaf since I've had it. And I think I got this last summer. So for a whole year, I've only gotten one leaf from this plant. So it is a lot slower growing for me. And most of my theorems I will be watering today as well. But this is, this is the newest leaf on this one. But it is a really pretty, pretty plant. It's just super slow. And the last anthurium I have is my Forgetii. You can see that it's been putting on massive leaves. And then you can also see that when I wasn't watering correctly, those are what the older leaves look like. And so before I start um, wiping this off, I'm just going to cut these older leaves off just to clean the plant up. And I'm also going to cut off this bloom because I don't really need it. And it's even putting out another bloom. So this plant, for me, is always blooming. But now you can see that looks a lot better. The plant looks more clean. And it, it's putting out huge leaves. And then it's also got this new leaf growing here. But, yeah, if I can get my anthuriums to be a lot fuller and, you know, with a couple leaves going, I think they will become more of my favorite plants. Right now, anthems are not my favorite plants just because I can't get them as full as I would like them. But they still are very beautiful plants. And I do not like water sitting on these leaves because they do easily get infections, they get bacteria. I've had that happen before, so I definitely make sure that the water is rinsed out of the, the cloth and that I, I'm not leaving a lot of, um, you know, water on them. You can also wipe the backs of the leaves. You just have to be careful when you're wiping your plant leaves that you're not being too rough. I do like to hold the leaf in the palm of my hand that gives you more more control so that way you're not ripping the leaves and then we're going to move on to my calathea this is my calathea medallion this is just growing so well for me i think it's put on three leaves um, but as far as the let me move this with the medallion this is one of the dust the biggest dust collectors in my collection this plant collects so much dust on the leaves it's not even funny but I'm always having to make sure these leaves are you know dust free that way they can grow well I did notice that this plant I, was one of the prayer plants that I did have to move closer to the window and um, that's when it started putting out leaves. So if your medallion isn't growing and all your other conditions are great, try moving it just a tad, just a tad bit closer to the window. Don't go crazy because you can easily burn these plants out, but that's what that looks like now. Nice and shiny. That looks beautiful. I have my sanguinea. This one is growing so slow compared to my other um, stromanthes, but it, 
it is turning around. I will say it did also have a lot of um, damage from, you know, cold damage from when I ordered it. So that is one of the reasons why. Um, and then it does have a little yellow leaf. So I'm just gonna cut that off while we're here. And then it has this kind of misshapen leaf. Normally I would leave that on the plant, but I'm just gonna cut it off. And then now you can see what it looks like. Very beautiful. And so this is my medallion too. I did go ahead and combine this because I had two of them. One was really tiny and then the other one was kind of a medium sized. But now you can see what they look like put together. This is a very gorgeous plant and it gives me no difficulties at all. I think I might even like this one more than the medallion. But it's nice to have a, um, a light option and a dark option. I also need to water my prayer plants um, because like I said in my video, my care video, I don't like for my prayer plants to, to get dried out. So I do water them when the moisture meter uh, gets to a three. And then I water them thoroughly. I pretty much soak the plant so that way it holds me over a longer time rather than you know just giving it a little bit of drink so I, I water it all the way through so every bit of soil is you know soaked and they really have been enjoying that this one has put on on two new leaves but that's what that one looks like your plants look so much better when you just take a little moment to you know groom them take off any yellow leaves I do have a couple yellow leaves on this one. You can see one there. And there's one here. But yeah, your plants look so much better when you just take a little bit of care just to trim off any yellow leaves. Also, when you wipe off the leaves, it just makes them look so much better. And sometimes Myself, I even lose track of that when I get busy, but I do find it very satisfying to go through sometimes do my collection and just give my plants a, a really good wiping and cleaning. And this is why I also haven't been buying too many more plants, just because I need to make sure that I'm caring for the ones that I already have because it's so easy to just keep adding new plants to your collection um, while forgetting about your other ones. So I've been making it a priority just to not forget about the ones that I already have. Cause you know, those are the ones you started your collection with. So it's kind of messed up if you forget about them, let them go to the wayside, which I do and you just keep adding, you know, whatever's cool or whatever's new. Treat your plants like the redheaded stepchild. <laughs> but, and I do find this to be, like I said, very relaxing. This would be nice to do on an, an early morning or on the weekend if you don't have too much going on. I was telling one of my friends or I was telling, um, these people were asking me about my plant care and I was just telling them that watering plants is just one of the most relaxing things ever. Just to go through and water your plants, especially if you're not in a rush that day, just to go through and water them. It's just so relaxing and meditative. But yeah, that's what that plant looks like looks so much better that is a beautiful plant like I said I try not to leave too much water on the leaves especially with prayer plants but that looks so good this makes me so happy and this also helps if like 
you get into a rut with your plants and you want to buy a new plant but you can't or you're trying not to buy a new plant just you know propagate your plant or just go around wiping them it makes it so much um, better for your wallet but and it also like kind of changes your plant collection up slightly but I find that when I want to buy a new plant add a new plant to my collection I just change up the ones I already have I'll propagate them make them shorter or you know make them fuller and it just changes the look of the plant so I'm wiping off my red vein Maranta this plant has been growing like crazy and I I was hearing that this was a slow grower but that hasn't been the case in my you know in my experience and I just leave this one just sits here on the table in the low light area but as you can see it has put on so much growth all this is new and then this whole elbow is new and then this little elbow is new so you can see that it's been growing a lot and I just got this plant this year I believe I ordered it in April so it's been putting on a lot of growth for it to be a slow slow growing plant but yeah those are the ones that I wanted to wipe down and just to do some pruning I just need to prune this little yellow leaf also guys yesterday I just watched the new Space Jam movie and which space comment down below which space which space jam movie do you think i like the best do I, do you guys think i like the original space jam or do you think i like space jam new legacy because i have some thoughts and if you guys comment down below i will tell you what those thoughts all are in the next video because yeah i'm interested to know which one you guys think i i like better but um, so we wiped all the ones on the table and now I have, I think I'm going to do the two that are in the house and then move to the bathroom to do some treatment and we may do the ones outside because the ones outside, one of my philodendron has thrips and I'm just, I don't know if that plant, if I can't get rid of those thrips by the end of the summer, I won't be moving that plant back indoors because you guys, if you've seen my last videos, you know my battle with thrips and I just, I, mm, I don't want to go, I don't want to be dealing with that again. One of them has scale and I think the other one, I think they just had spider mites, but yeah, the thrips, spider mites are easy. Thrips, it's a whole other thing, but we're gonna move to the bathroom now. Or we're gonna do the two, I have my Peace Lily and my uh, Monster, or no, my Rapid Afford the Cursiva, which that plant, I just don't know what I'm gonna do with that plant, but yeah, let's get. All right, so we're over here wiping. I'm gonna wipe my Peace Lily. Um, I hope you guys can see the dust on this plant. This plant is really dusty. It also has a lot of pollen from when I had it outside. And so you can see that this is a leaf that, um, was grown indoors and you can see it's a lot shinier compared to the dusty one so this is what you want your leaf to look like this is what my leaves look like so let's <laughs> clean this plant up so that way it can grow right and this is a, such a beautiful plant I actually really am enjoying this plant a lot it has been growing well I love the broad leaves of this plant and it is just so awesome. I love the ribbing that's on the leaves. Um, and if you guys have ever seen the variegated version, the variegated version is even more gorgeous. And I wish I could get my hands on the variegated version without, you know, paying an arm and a leg. But if I could, I would get that one as well. Like I said, this is just a really gorgeous plant. This would be a nice plant to have just to make your house look more lush and full. This is like the uh, bird's nest fern. I recommend these kinds of plants to make your house more lush. Or even if you have a corner that you wanna just have a plant, stick a plant in, 
Of course, you would have to make sure the plant is getting the right amount of lighting. As you can see, I do have my grow lights on this plant just to give it an additional boost. It did also enjoy being outside, so I may put it back outside because recently our temperatures haven't been terrible. But yeah, I'm just going through wiping down the leaves and it's looking so much better. I hope you guys can see it on camera. I should get in the habit of wiping my plants on a weekly basis, but to be honest, that's a lot of plants to wipe on a weekly basis. Maybe monthly at least to start. I think that would be a feasible goal. But now you can see what it looks like and that just looks so much better. This is the next plant I want to wipe down. This is my Raphidophora decursiva. You turn on the light. If you guys can see that. This plant, I have so many mixed feelings about this plant. I really love this plant and this plant became so trendy because of the broad shaped leaves and it kind of gives you Monstera vibes with how broad the leaves grow and with the fenestrations. But this plant is not growing the way I would like it to grow. You guys know, like I always say, I like full plants, but this plant just grows so straggly. And it, 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 at least in my experience, it puts off these long runners, as you can see here. And yeah, you can cut these off you know, to propagate and things like that. But I do not enjoy plants that put off these long runners because it becomes so straggly looking. And I have cut this plant multiple times. If you can see here, I've cut it twice. So this was the first cut and this is the second cut. So I've cut this plant before. So. I definitely have cut it before and propagated, and that's why it's so full at the bottom. And that's why I'm even getting new growth here and down here. But as far as like filling in, this plant has a, at least for me, it's been a very difficult time filling this plant in. So I'm like tempted just to cut it again. If not, I just, I really don't know what I'm gonna do with this plant. But you guys can see what it looks like. It is pretty full for me, but that's only because I propagated it and made it fuller. So, like I said, this probably be the ones that I propagate again and we'll see what I do with this plant, but I'm not enjoying the fact that it's not very full. This is a very active plant. And I mean, act, when I say active, I mean, I have to constantly go in and propagate it just to have the look that I'm going for, so. That's that one. All right guys, so the last set of plants that I'm probably gonna do in this video are just um, some prayer plants. I have um, my philodendron golden dragon there in the back, my uh, varicosum melanochrysum cross, and my burl marks. If you can even see that hot mess of a plant, but, um, I don't know what it was. I feel like, and I'm not trying to knock, oh, and I also have my um, Anthem for uh, VTI. I'm not trying to knock Steve's leaves or anything, but this plant I feel like was the culprit of spider mites being in my collection. I did go ahead and get a um, silver band, which is gorgeous, and it's put off these two big leaves here. But this plant I feel like had spider mites when it arrived to my house and kind of spread the, you know, spread the love amongst my other plants. And so spider mites, like I said, aren't a bad thing, um, but they, they do spread pretty quickly. So I do like to uh, control them when I first see them. And I use this Captain Jack's dead brew bug, dead bug. This is my favorite spray to use, especially for spider mites and thrips and things like that. I do not use neem oil because I don't feel that it works. 
in my experience. And so I like this Captain Jack's and I spray it on the tops of the leaves and the bottoms of the leaves. And I have used this on my prayer plants and so I know it doesn't um, damage them. Some sprays you have to be careful using on your prayer plants. But like I said, I've used this one and I haven't had any um, bad reactions. And so like I said, I'm just gonna spray the tops, the bottoms and the stems. You wanna make sure you spray the stems. And I'm just gonna spray these. Like I said, this is my favorite spray. I used to use the Miracle Grow or Miracle Care in the green bottle. That one is also good. Um, that one's more of an insecticidal soap, so it is a little bit more soapy if you like that kind of a thing. But this one is definitely my favorite. As well as I noticed that it lasts a lot longer than some of these other sprays. And with a larger collection, I need something that's gonna also be sustainable for me. And so I'm just gonna spray these plants and I'm gonna let them drip dry. So that way I'm not making the a mess in my house. That's why I picked the bathroom. And I'm gonna spray my silver band from Steve's Leaves. I'm also leaving these plants in here because I do plan on watering them and that will make it easier for them to drip dry. I'm gonna spray my Macliana. And it's also good, even if you don't see pests, but you see pests on another plant that's near your other plants, just to go ahead and spray them as well, just for preventative measures. So you don't have to worry about it down the line, which is this Macliana's case. It was near the silver band and this uh, Zebrina. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spray it down. And sometimes I even like to spray the top of the soil so I'm gonna do my varicosum. I'm gonna move this over so you guys can see. I'm gonna do my varicosum melanocrysum cross, my golden dragon. My golden dragon didn't have any pests, it was just really dusty and dirty. but why not treat it while we're in here? This also needs a good watering, I can tell because the, the leaves are a bit limp on my varicosum melanocrysum. And that's a good indication that the plant needs watering. So we're gonna give this plant the full treatment. This is also one of the plants I'm gonna propagate because as you can see, there's a lot of hangage here. And so this is, these are one of the plants that I just need to go ahead and cut back. See if I can get you guys a better view. So yeah, this is the top of my varicosum melanocrysum. And then it has all this that needs to be either propagated or staked up. And that's what I'm gonna do in my next video. I'm also gonna spray my burl marks. Spray the stems. Brown Marks is actually a really pretty plant. It's really used for a lot of ground coverage and filling and landscaping. And I don't feel like people talk about it a lot, but I really like it. I kind of wish mine was fuller, but it is a really, it gives pretty much a full plant. But yeah, people definitely don't talk about the Brown Marks enough in my opinion. But yeah, so we're just gonna go through, spray all these. And yeah, so that's what that looks like. All the plants are sprayed down and hopefully 
we'll get this taken care of. All right, so the last plants that I'm gonna treat for today are my Philodendron padatum, my Philodendron uh, lickety split or cellum, and then I have my Philodendron ring of fire over here. And I'm just gonna give these plants a quick spray. Uh, and maybe I'll show you guys any pests that I see. So basically this plant, where is it? This plant has a bit of scale. If you guys can see the black dots there, that's a bit of scale. And then it did have some kind of green or clear bug, but I think the bad bugs from um, the outdoors took care of that. Um, but I did see that it had some kind of like green bug, but I'm not seeing it right now. So I think the bad bugs might have taken care of that one. And then this one, I was seeing a bit of thrip on this one. I don't know if I can see it now. Mm, I don't know if you can see that. A little bit of larva and things like that. So I'm just going to spray these. Um, like I said, if I can't get rid of the thrips and, and things like that, then I will probably not keep the plant. This plant also needs to be restaked and propagated. If you can see, there we go. It also needs to be restaked and propagated, but we're just gonna go ahead and spray it for today. We don't have a ton of sunlight out here, so I feel comfortable spraying these. But this one also, I'm going to chop back quite a bit to bring it back to a good level. And some of my plants have been growing like gangbusters out here. They really do put on a lot of growth outside. And sometimes I even put my plants outside if they have pests because the out, you know, the pests from outside and spiders and things like that will eat the, the other bugs. And so that helps too, which is probably why I don't see those other green pests or whatever else was on this plant, just the scale. And the scale hasn't really damaged the plant too much either. So that's that plant. And then we're going to do this one. Thrips are some of the worst pests I've ever dealt with in my plant collection, my plant journey. I do not like thrips at all. As you can see, this is a newer leaf. So beautiful. This leaf has taken some damage. but I would still leave this on. I wouldn't cut this leaf off because it's not so damaged to where it needs to be cut off. I'm just gonna spray this one down. I really do like this plant. I just find that this plant is very prone to getting thrips. I've had this plant twice now and both times this plant has gotten thrips. But it's also putting on so much new growth. There's a lot of growth in the middle. Now these couple of leaves I might cut off over here. This plant could also use a, a nice watering as well. But yeah. Hopefully, like I said, I can get rid of the problem. Then that way I won't have to get rid of the plant. But that's what that looks like. Then we're just gonna come over here and do my ring of fire. I did see a little bit of scale on this one, but really only one leaf on this one had scale. 
and I guess because it was close to my padatum. But I'm just going to spray the whole thing just to be on the safe side. And yes, some of these plants I just like to douse. Give it a really good spray. And that's it. Spray the stems. It's looking a lot better. And as you can see here, it's putting off new growth. Oh right here it's putting off a new leaf I am gonna have to think about what I'm gonna do with this plant as far as getting it to straighten up but that one looks really good all right guys so that's it for today I have gone through and treated of several of my plants and they look so much better I've wiped down the leaves my plants look so much better just it's so crazy to see what little bit of um, just wiping your plant leaves does for your collection and so we're still on the, the road of rebuilding my plant collection and just getting them all sorted and um, you know just brought back together and I'm feeling so much better each time I do a new video to show you guys what I'm doing like I said the next video I want to do some propagating and staking that is going to make a lot of my plants look so much better just with a little bit of change and like I said, some of them I'm cutting completely back to start over, but I'm very excited. Um, so I just want to thank you guys for joining me today and wiping my plants. And while some people um, will say that I wouldn't have a pest issue if I didn't put my plants outside, that could be true. It could not be true. If you watch my plant videos, you can get pests by bringing fruit in from the farmer's market, the grocery store. You can get pests if you open your doors or your windows. Pests can come in through your screens and things like that. So you don't necessarily always have to put your plants outside to get pests. Um, your pest plants, when they get stressed out, they put off pheromones that attract pests. So it's not necessarily just putting your plants outside. But I do find that for the majority, Putting my plants outside has been so beneficial for their growth and in the long, you know, in the long run, longevity wise, it just has been doing so well for a majority of my plants. And if it wasn't so, uh, if it wasn't for the climate change this year, I would have almost all of these plants outside. But yeah, so I just want to make a note of that because um, some people will say that, you know, if I didn't put my plants outside, then I wouldn't have a pest issue. That's not that's not true as long as you get on top of the, the pests when you see them then your plants should be fine you shouldn't have entire decimations of collections and things like that but comment down below if you guys are have been uh, putting yourself on a schedule as far as treating and wiping and you know regular plant care i'm just interested to see what you guys are doing also if you have any plant infestations if you guys are having a thrip issue or a spider mite issue. I wouldn't say mine is like, you know, state of emergency right now. It's kind of just like, eh, I see something, I spray it. That's kind of where the level I am right now. Um, but yeah, just let me know what you guys think. And I can't wait for you guys to see the next episode. Um, comment down below if you guys are excited to see the next episode. I just want to thank you guys so much for watching my videos, commenting, and subscribing. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.